much do, do you know about type 1 diabetes if you don't have it in your immediate family? According to the Center for Disease Control, there are nearly 26 million people in the U.S. with diabetes. A new case is diagnosed every 30 seconds. Welcome to Health Matters, I'm Kristen Johnson. Today I'm taking an in-depth look at diabetes, both types, type 1 and type 2. We begin with a little background, understanding just how diabetes develops. Take a look at this YouTube video produced by Get Blood Sugar Control. Insulin is one of the many hormones created in the human body. Insulin is important to the body. It allows blood sugar, or glucose, to get into cells to provide them with energy. When you eat, your body breaks down food into glucose in your small intestine. This is your body's source of energy for everything it does, from working and thinking to exercising and healing. Glucose travels through your bloodstream, looking for individual cells that need energy. For glucose to get into the cells, it requires insulin. Insulin is the key that unlocks cells for glucose to enter and deliver energy. When insulin arrives, it signals the cell to activate glucose transporters. These transporters pull glucose through cell walls. When glucose moves into the cell, it delivers energy. Insulin is normally produced in the pancreas by specialized cells called beta cells. When glucose enters your bloodstream, the pancreas matches it with the right amount of insulin to move glucose into your cells. In people with diabetes, this process doesn't work as it should. In type 1 diabetes, scientists believe the body's immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys beta cells in the pancreas. A person with type 1 diabetes loses the ability to produce insulin. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas is not producing enough insulin to meet the body's needs. Over time, the amount of insulin typically becomes less and less. In some type 2 diabetes patients, cells build up a resistance to insulin. Even though there may be insulin in the bloodstream, it is not enough to unlock cells to allow glucose to enter. As a result, it takes more insulin to find the right key to unlock the cell for glucose. This makes it more difficult for cells to get the energy they need. When glucose can't get into cells, either because there isn't enough insulin or because the body is resisting it, glucose begins to build up in the bloodstream. As a result, all that energy is wasted. It does not get to cells where it is needed. Without glucose in your cells, they lack the energy they require to keep your body working. To keep glucose from building up in the bloodstream, an external supply of insulin may be needed. Because people with type 1 diabetes can't produce their own insulin, they must inject insulin several times every day or receive insulin through an insulin pump. Many people with type 2 diabetes take insulin too. Injected insulin acts on glucose in a similar way to insulin the body would produce if it could. Like the body's insulin, injected insulin helps reduce the amount of glucose in the bloodstream by getting it into cells where it is needed for energy. Diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and can lead to serious health problems, nerve damage, heart disease, blindness, and kidney failure, as well as lower extremity amputations. Symptoms of diabetes may include frequent urination, excessive thirst, unexpected weight loss, extreme hunger, sudden vision changes, tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, feeling tired much of the time, very dry skin, sores that are slow to heal, and infections more often than usual. When we come back, you'll hear how some of those exact symptoms led to one family finding out their son had diabetes at just around two years old. When we first came home from the hospital, I called the doctor every day because here are the questions I had. Did I do it right? Did the shot go incorrectly? Did I overmeasure? Did I undermeasure? Health Matters will be right back. 
Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs. They're working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Statistics show about 80 people per day are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. The autoimmune disease affects both children and adults. It comes on suddenly and what causes it is not exactly known. Scientists believe it could be both genetics and environmental factors. Type 1 diabetes has nothing to do with diet or lifestyle. At present, there is nothing to do to prevent it or get rid of it. It's a fact one family found to be their reality when their 23-month-old son started showing classic symptoms of diabetes. So I have my Dexcom, and right now it says that my blood sugar is 216. Watching a kid with technology is always fascinating. And I put in my number. How fast their fingers can translate the information their brains soak up. But this little piece of machinery is not the latest handheld gaming device. In fact, quite the opposite. It delivers real-time data that helps nine-year-old Benny here make some life-saving decisions. Inset for my Dexcom, it's a little bigger than my normal one. To an outsider, this looks like a lot for a little kid to handle. The lingo, all those numbers, knowing how to deal with blood sugar when it's too high or too low. But if ever there's been a poster child for how to live life and manage diabetes, Benny would be a good face for it. It's just life. I spent a couple of hours with Benny and other children before a checkers hockey game. Their parents were downstairs planning out the next juvenile diabetes research fundraising event. Besides taking breaks for finger pricks and sips of juice boxes, these kids were, well, just kids. Don't let it slow you down in life. Yes, it's all a lot of hard work, but you'll get used to it after one or two years. This has been Benny's reality since around two years old. His mom, Stacy, describes how his diagnosis came about really wetting the bed in terms of through to the mattress, not just through a diaper, uh, very scary. Um, could not go for more than 20 minutes without wanting to drink eight ounces of water. For us, when we heard that Benny had type 1 diabetes, we knew life was going to change. Uh, I didn't know an awful lot about it. I knew diabetes was something out there that you saw Wilford Brimley doing commercials for. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about diabetes. Or, you know, didn't Halle Berry have something? For children with diabetes, life isn't quite so carefree. But this mom, former Stacey TV Stacey. anchor and radio personality, made it her mission to find out all she could about the chronic illness. You would not believe the things we heard. Did you take him to McDonald's too many times? You know, was he really sedentary? Um, maybe you gave him too much to eat. And people, because no one understands, this is an, an autoimmune condition. It's not caused by eating too much sugar. It's not caused by being sedentary. Even type 2, there's such a big genetic component. There's a lot of guilt and shame in that community. And people need better education about all types of diabetes. Stacy says her son has been a great ambassador for doing just that. Thanks everybody for the money for Benny's Brigade. Yeah, when they first meet me, I have to tell them every, every single little thing. And then, like, somewhere near the end of the school year, I have to explain to them again. Sometimes, not all the time. But in second grade, I think, like, two to three days from the beginning, everybody crowded around me while I was checking my blood sugar because I had no clue what I was doing. Benny's attitude has always been accepting about his diagnosis, his mom says, but it doesn't mean there aren't days he'd rather not have to deal with it. Living with type 1 diabetes is very difficult because the, the first thing you have to understand is if you do everything the same way every day, you eat the same foods, you have the same level of activity, you still may get different results. Blood sugar is so tricky and elusive, you don't realize how amazing your pancreas is until it goes kaput. For years, Stacy says she would set an alarm to wake up every night and check on Benny, but thanks to a um, continuous glucose right monitor, says, or CGM, an alarm sounds if Benny's blood sugar gets too and low. She hopes by the time Benny is an adult, technological it's advances and treatments will be way ahead of where they are now. I'm not a person who's waiting for a cure tomorrow. I think there will be one eventually, but I think the technology is going to catch up 
and, and really kind of change his life in ways that are exciting to imagine. Coming up, hear about some of the latest advancements to treat type 1 diabetes, including a possible vaccine and the development of an artificial pancreas. More after this break. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Treatment options for type 1 diabetes are constantly improving and research is ongoing in the fight to ultimately help people live disease free. Stanford researchers are studying a vaccine that could reverse type 1 diabetes. The vaccine uses DNA to attract and attack bad cells, leaving behind good cells. 80 patients received the vaccine once a week for 12 weeks. Tests showed it basically stalled the disease. Future studies of the vaccine will test whether people can reduce or one day even eliminate daily insulin doses. Late last year, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, along with the Sansum Diabetes Research Institute and the College of Engineering at the University of California, Santa Barbara, announced the first successful clinical research trial using an artificial pancreas and inhaled insulin together. The trial found the disease can be managed through a process that delivers precise amounts of insulin around the clock based on real-time glucose measurements without the need for patient intervention. We basically have a continuous glucose monitor. So this is the receiver. And if we can lift it up here, basically there's a wire under the skin here that tells how much glucose there is uh, in, under the skin. And that wirelessly communicates with the, the receiver. The receiver then sends the signal to the computer. Could be a laptop, could be a phone. And then it decides, the brain of the operation here decides how much insulin to give. Then it sends that information out through another cable to this device, which wirelessly communicates with the pod. The patient gets insulin every five minutes. And then we get another reading from the sensor and it goes back through the same process. Researchers say this system is this further off. enhanced and fine-tuned by using insulin inhaled insulin, insulin right at the start quickly. of a meal. The advantage of the inhaled insulin is it gets in right away, works very quickly. So at the start of a meal, if we can give a small dose of inhaled insulin, instead of the blood sugar going up very fast, it will go up a little bit slower, and the controller and then the subcutaneous insulin can actually work better. And Google is working on a new product they hope will change the way diabetics monitor their blood sugar levels. The project's co-founder says a contact lens measures glucose in tears using a tiny wireless chip and miniaturized glucose sensors. Google says a lot of work still needs to be done to make the product a reality. It could take up to a few years, and the smart contact lens, as it's known, also needs FDA approval before it goes on the market. This is a, a device that people wear you know, daily, the, the contact lens. For us to be able to take that platform that exists currently, that people wear, and add intelligence and, and functionality to it is, is really exciting. Next, taking a look at type 2 diabetes, previously called non-insulin dependent diabetes or adult onset diabetes. This type accounts for 90 to 95 percent of all diagnosed cases of diabetes. More after this break. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life. A majority of diabetes cases are type 2. The CDC calls it a metabolic disorder. A person's body still produces insulin but is unable to use it effectively. Usually diagnosed in adulthood, the increase in obesity has led to a rise in cases in children and young people. Those with this type of diabetes aren't always required to take insulin injections. 
We're about to meet two women who know firsthand the struggle with type 2 diabetes and learn what roles they are playing to help others get healthy and manage the disorder. Yeah. Dietitian Babiola Gaines can whip up dinner in less time than it takes you to watch your favorite evening sitcom. 20 minutes, no special ingredients, and still healthy for people with special diets like diabetics. The diabetic diet is just basically a healthy diet and everybody in the family can eat the same food. Gaines is here showing off her culinary skills and introducing folks to a cookbook she co-authored for the American Diabetes Association. It's the first African-American cookbook of its kind. The idea to write it came after she watched her mother struggle to feed her father, a diabetic diagnosed with type 2 later in life. My father was never overweight. So my dad called me, he said, I don't want to take insulin the rest of my life, what should I do? I said, Dad, stop walking, eating better, and stop with the desserts, because he was an avid dessert person. And he started doing that, and he went from insulin to oral medicines. And when he died, he was on no medicine. According to the CDC, African Americans are among the minority groups most likely to develop type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Endocrinologist Dorothy Codswa tells me she developed diabetes during her college years. It wasn't until she started developing complications that she finally contemplated changing her lifestyle. I actually have two endocrine disorders, but the diabetes was a big one for me, especially you know being diagnosed when I was 17. That was kind of horrifying, and I was also morbidly obese at the time too. So, but you've gotten all that under control, and it yes. So uh, I, with diet and exercise and diligence being paid to what I eat, yes, I actually have that under control, and 85 pounds lighter. It's these real life struggles, the one Gaines witnessed, the one Kadzwa went through, that helps them both relate better to patients. Kadzwa says 85% of the patients she sees are diabetics. They vary from the recently diagnosed to those who have had diabetes for years. Out in the community when you're diagnosed as having the sugar, it, it elicits a whole bunch of images, you know, such as I can't just, I, I can't have sugar. And so they don't eat sugar candy, cakes, cookies, but what they forget about is the starch, you know, the potatoes, the breads, the pastas, the lima beans, the pinto beans, because no one has ever sat down and just talked about it with them. I don't tell them you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't have this. We work with where they are as far as their diet is concerned, and we come up with a plan to make sure they have good blood glucose control. Gaines tells this group diet begins with how you shop and then how you cook. Kadzwa says talking about diet is equally as important as talking about medications. We have come a long way with diabetes and diabetes management and therapy and just what we understand about food. And diabetes doesn't have to be a death sentence. I mean, it's not the end of your life. It's just the beginning of a new phase of your life and it can be just as fulfilling as when you didn't know you had diabetes. Coming up after the break, the cost of diabetes. How much Americans with the disorder pay a year in medical costs compared to those who don't have diabetes? Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Diabetes is one of the costliest chronic illnesses. A person living with diabetes will pay two times more in medical bills than someone without diabetes. According to the latest statistics, all types of diabetes combined amount to $245 billion in annual costs. The cost of health care per year for a person with diabetes, more than $11,000. Compare that to a little more than $4,000 for a person without. I spoke with Dr. Donnie Newsom, an associate professor of pharmacy at Wingate University about the cost of diabetes. Dr. Newsom tells me he deals primarily with type 2 diabetics at his local family practice. In the past, he's talked to business leaders on ways to reduce the impact of chronic diseases like diabetes on cost and productivity. There's information that goes all the way down to the county level in terms of how much it's impacting uh, us right here in the Union County area. Uh, and it's substantial. It's in the millions of dollars even here locally. And then obviously if you 
expand that out to the state level or even the country, uh, you're looking at billions of dollars lost in either direct or indirect business costs uh, to the employer. Uh, and so what we've, what I proposed at the Chamber of Commerce talk was that employers need to really work on having wellness initiatives uh, within their companies, uh, even going so far as to hire someone to head that up, you know, or, or versus contracting it out to someone else, uh, where you can focus on prevention uh, of progression or development of diabetes and heart disease, uh, as opposed to just spending millions and millions of dollars in insurance costs on taking care of patients once they've, uh, I guess it'd be their employees or the employer. Uh, taking care of employees that have the conditions. Dr. Newsom feels a better understanding surrounding the cause of type 2 diabetes has developed within the past five to ten years. He tells me it's an exciting time to be in a field that is changing rapidly with new guidelines and classes of drugs and there are new ways of evaluating patients coming out almost on a monthly basis, he tells me. Bottom line, people should learn as much as they can about diabetes, take ownership of it, and it can be very manageable. That is all the time we have, but to learn more about diabetes or resources available, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention is a great tool. The website, cdc.gov. Thank you for watching. For Health Matters, I'm Kristen Johnson. We welcome your thoughts on this show and your ideas for future topics, so email Kristen at k.johnson at wingate.edu or follow her on Twitter at kjohnsonwutv.